In this video, we will see the free running mode of the timer router inside LPC when it is used as a counter. Okay, so one of the applications where you can use a free running counter is in our own mouse. Okay, I hope you have seen this own mouse with a board uh, running around. Nowadays, we have these optical mouses, but before optical mouses came into picture, this is what we used to have. Okay, so inside that, you can actually see two home meets here. So there is uh, one here and there is a home in here. And at the two ends of the home wheel, we have an LED at one end and we have a photo detector at the other. Here also, that is the case. We have an LED here, we have a photo detector here. Now, one arrangement is used to find the movement of the mouse in the y direction. So this one is used to find the or how much mouse is moving in this direction or this direction. This is used to find how much it is moving in this direction or this direction. So what happens is, yeah, whenever the mouse is moving, for example, in this direction, uh, because of the board is moving, this core will be rotating. And whenever the cork comes in between the LED and the detector, there won't be any light falling on the detector. And whenever there is this space between the corks, light will be falling on the detector. So if you look at the output of the uh, light detector when the mouse is moving, uh, you will see a series of pulses, uh, something like this. Okay. So this is basically uh, when light is falling, uh, I will say maybe output is high and light is not falling output is low. That depends upon the kind of sensor photo detector you are using. The other way is also fine uh, in some cases. So basically you will have a series of pulses. Now by counting these pulses, uh, you will be able to find out how much the mouse has moved in a particular direction. Okay. So this is one application of free runner counter to count these number of pulses. So uh, for similar application, again we are going to use our LTC and we can see how can we use the timer counter inside LTC as a free running counter. The programming steps are much simpler for counter if you see. So when we are using a timer or counter as a counter, uh, as I have shown in the previous video, what happens is uh, the timer or counter will be running based on these external pulses, these external events. So let's call them as external events. So those events can be some signal going from low to high or some signal going from high to low. So you can choose like whether the counter value should increment and signal goes from low to high or, or when the signal goes from high to low. So depending upon the, the value inside of our TC register increments. That's the uh, whole mechanism. So, uh, now remember the event is coming from outside the chip. So there should be some provision uh, to connect this external event to this internal timer counter that is done through uh, one of the pins of the chip. So in case of LPC, we have to use one of the four pins for doing that. Okay, so let's look at the program uh, step. So first, uh, as I mentioned, there should be some way to connect these external events. So you have to configure your input for that. Now the interface used by a timer counter for, for getting connected with these external pins, we are going to call them uh, capture pins, capture channel, whatever you like. So each timer counter inside LPC has two capture uh, channels. But at one instance of time, you can use only one of them. So you can write like cap uh, 0, 0.0 to indicate the zero capture interface of timer 0. So timer 0, uh, capture 0, or cap 0 0.1 is timer 0, capture 1, like that for. Uh, you will have to connect this capture interface to one of these pins. Uh, so in the GPIO discussion, we have already seen our pin cell registers. And we mentioned that by default, all the port pins they are configured as GPIO. But if you want any other function on those pins, you will have to configure it in the pin cell register. So here you will have to do it because by default all these pins are GPIO. But in this case, we need to connect this pin uh, to the caption interface of the timer. So you have to configure the corresponding pin cell register depending upon which timer and which caption interface you are planning to use. Next one, you will have to configure it as a counter. So in the previous example, we have seen in the CTCR register, uh, you can configure it as either a timer or a counter. Previous example, we didn't touch it, 
because by default it is configured as a time to use the integer block. But this time you will have to modify it to use it as a counter. Now in this case, when you are using it as a counter, uh, there is no need of prescaling because you are not working on the internal block, so you cannot prescale this external event and there is no need of configuring the uh, PCLK because again you are not working on the internal block, you are working on the external event. So this much is enough. After that, again, yeah, you can start the timer counter, uh, maybe you can reset to make it zero, here also at the beginning, then you can start it and then it will keep on running as long as these pulses are coming. So whenever the pulse comes, uh, he will increment. That you can configure whether he should increment when the pulse goes from low to high or when it goes from high to low or in both cases. That provision is also available. So this will keep on running until you reset and stop uh, once you are done. Okay. So the application I am trying to demonstrate is, okay, assume since we don't have LED or focus sensor in our simulator, I am assuming uh, I will have some button connected to one of my uh, GPU pins and whenever I press this button, you know, it goes from low to high, uh, my counter value should increment. And whatever is the current value in the counter should be displayed using a bunch of LEDs uh, connected to another port. Okay. So I assume like in port 0, uh, we have a lot of LEDs connected. And whatever is the current counter value, it will be indicated by uh, growing the LEDs. That is the problem we are trying to do. Now we will go to the specifics. So let me start a, a new file here. I am taking our source code for a free running timer and then I am just trying to modify it here. So this time we say it as the running counter. See. Now I will add it to my source code also. Okay. Now, uh, what I'm doing is inside me and uh, completely delete everything. And let's start fresh. So, all the function I will keep them there because some of them might be useful. So, I'm trying to use uh, capture zero interface of timer zero. So, my plan is I need to use timer zero. That is why in the big code we register, I don't have to do anything. If you are planning to use timer two or timer three, you will have to configure big code we register also. So first thing I need to find when I am using timer zero capture zero. Okay, so this is the case. Timer zero capture zero. You can uh, have the input events either on port one pin twenty six or port three uh, pin twenty three. If you are using this interface, you should configure in pin set register for alternate function F three. You will have to write the corresponding bits as one one. If you are using function two. We need to write the corresponding bits as one zero. So you have again two options uh, to capture the input from two different things, but at a point in time you can capture from only one pin. Okay. So you need to enable only one of them. Uh, by accident, if you enable both of them for capture 0 0.0, uh, here you be always capturing on one point two six, the lower pin, uh, not on the high one. So only for capture zero and capture one of timer zero, you have uh, multiple pin options for all other capture interfaces of all other timers, uh, only one dedicated pin is there. So, so there is no confusion. So I'm planning to use this one, uh, capture zero of timer zero, which is in port one, two, six. So which pin cell register should be configured? You should be immediately able to say because each pin cell register configures for uh, half of a port. 16 pins. Okay, so is it, if it is port uh, 1, uh, we can just multiply it by 2. So it will be pin cell register 2 and 3 for port 1. And if it is pin 0 to 15, it will be pin cell register 2. If it is from 16 to 31, it will be pin cell register 3. So from here itself, I can say that I need to move for pin cell register 3. And uh, again, uh, going like 2 bits are required for each pin. For modifying uh, for pin number 26, I will have to configure pins number 20 and 21. Okay, so even without looking at the sheet, you can find it out. But uh, if you don't want to do the calculation, you can actually go to the data sheet and look for where captures zero plus zero is coming. So you can see that is coming in pin cell 3 register, and we have to modify bit 
20 and 21. So pin 20 and 21 should be configured to 11 to enable capture suit. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm not writing it as a function or something. That part you can remind yourself now. I'm simply saying uh, pin 7, 3, and you can if I only those two bits to 11. So I just have to overwrite the one at all those positions. So I can say like pin 7, 7, 3, or this device 3, or by now 3, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so this will make those two bits high. Next one, uh, as I mentioned, we need to configure it as a counter. So, where do we do it? That we are doing here in the CTCR register. So, previously, in case of timer, yeah, we didn't touch it but because by default, it is in timer mode. We are working on the rising edge of the clock. Now, here we have the choice uh, to configure it as counter. So, as I mentioned, you can configure it. On the rising edge of the external event, falling edge of the external event, uh, or both edges. Okay, so let's configure it for the rising edge so that only when the button is pressed and the output from the button goes low to high, uh, I will increase it. Okay, so Same thing you see if I search this time also you can see this here. This one, so let's print it here. We need to make the lower two bits as zero one. So we we'll mask it with ID and then we we'll over with the zero one. So mask is only lower two bits. So it will be zero one, two, three, four, seven, and D. And we can work with one. You don't want to touch any other bits, that's why we do it like this. Or you can simply write uh, 0x1, that will work. We know that it will be like this. So once you have done this much, you have pretty much done. You have configured the pin for capturing. You have enabled the counter mode. Now you can start your time counter. So this was starting, let's reset it. So for that, we already have the function. Because there are no separate registers for resetting the time or counter. Basically, they are saying uh, that is happening through the same time control register. So, this function itself is enough. Then we can start it again. It is done through the same register, so we can use the same function. So, what I am doing is, uh, as I mentioned, whatever is the time value in the TC register, time counter register, that I just want to display over uh, one of the ports. So, this one. Uh, we are using capture 0 0.0 or pin 1.26. So one of the pins in port 1 uh, we are using as capturing. So I'm assuming LED is having port 0. So let's read the current value in the TC and just set it on port 0. So that is infinitely. And then while you know, I can say like, uh, I know pin 0 is what was the current value in the TC register? But we already have a function okay, time on value. So here we can run it and just put it here. But we need to configure this guy's direction. We can do it by not itself. IO DAS to go equal to zero. Configure it for output. Then here we are constantly doing it. So here there is no stopping of our counter. It is always rerunning. Whenever a, a punch comes, you will increment it and so the processor will be uh, displaying it all the times. Okay, so I guess we are done. Uh, now if you come by, okay, you will get an error because in my source code, we have a free running timer, free running counter. We have two main functions within one source group that is not allowed. Either you have different source group or you have to remove one of the files from your source code. So let me just remove it. It will not be needed, of course. It will just remove it from your project. Uh, we are on the free running counter now. Okay. okay, everything looks fine. So let's go to demo mode. And okay, the two interfaces we want to see. Okay, let the timer counter be there. I assume my LEDs are on port 0. So we'll keep it 0, let it be there. I have to gain my input on P1.26. So let's bring that one. So you can either choose slow or fast. 
as in matter in this case, because you are giving it through the pins. So both are fine, but let me take the slow one. Okay, so let's run everything in one shot. And uh, you can see it is enabled, it is stuck at zero, and my port zero output is all zero. Okay, so what should happen? P1.26, 242526. So let me make it high to low. Nothing happened. But when I make it low to high, yeah, you can see TC implemented by one immediately. The processor is keep on reading from this port and keep on writing to uh, port zero. In a few milliseconds, that information will come here. So one of the LEDs might be blown up if we have an interaction mode. So now you see whenever I have told it here, the TC value here will be implemented and the corresponding value will be come here. So this is the case for a pre-running problem. Now other options like increment for both edges or increment for both falling edge or adding a condition for stopping. Okay. Here, of course, if I press reset, everything will go to the normal mode. Uh, but you can add another, another option like if I press okay, this switch, assuming there is one more switch here, if I make it to zero, uh, he will reset the timer and he will clear the uh, port output that you can uh, try here. That is one option. So, so that options, uh, other variations you can try. Uh, so I guess that's it. This is the basic idea of a prism.